Shalom, Mishpacha. Shalom, family. Mishpacha is a Hebrew word. It means family. <laughs> We're the Mishpacha, the family with the Jewish heart, made up of Jewish and non-Jewish people, where slice the middle wall of separation between Jew and Gentile. It's finally come down to form one new man, one new humanity, getting ready, Mishpacha, to blow the grandest shofar. Oh, the grandest trumpet in Zion. We want everyone everywhere to hear the good news. We want everyone everywhere to be red hot for the Messiah. I'll tell you, uh, Shane Wall and I are having so much fun here. I'm glad you came for something more uh, because you're going to get it. I promise you. Uh, when was the last time you heard a message on understanding? How many times have you heard or you said, I just don't understand this. I don't understand why this good believer got a horrible disease and died. Well, this is what the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 7. With all you're getting, get understanding. Uh, you looked up the word get yes. in, the, uh, in the Hebrew. What does it mean? To get means to acquire for oneself. In other words, when you get understanding, you have it for your need, your usage. And we get understanding from God himself. Well, it, there's such an important topic. 300 times it talks about this understanding. It's a supernatural di dimension that comes from God himself. But I've never heard a message on this subject. And everyone is questioning so much today that uh, this is going to be something more for you to put everything together. Now, uh, Shane, you uh, came from a uh, Pentecostal background. Uh, you uh, got saved as a child. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when your mother was expecting you, yes. uh, there were prophecies about you. What did they say? People, one person picked my mother out of the audience and ministered to her. And they said, that child that's in your belly is anointed. So <laughs> my family knew from that point that, wow, you know, we have had preachers because her uncles were preachers. My mother had five uncles who were preachers and they wanted a boy. I was a miracle baby. After my oldest sister was born, my mother heard from the doctor, you can't have any more children. And 10 years later, here comes Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a miracle. Now, it says here that at 15, you began preaching. I started preaching. Uh, did, did people know you were going to be in ministry? They did. They did. Growing up in church, everybody knew that I was going to be a preacher. The words of knowledge that would come, the words of prophecy from the visiting evangelists that would come through and, and just pick me out. And God has a great work for you to do. God has put his word in you. And so I just knew coming up, I am going to preach. Tell me about the dream you had at age four. I was four years old, Sid, and I dreamt that my family and I were out in the den, just watching TV as normal mm -hmm. after eating. And there was a certain scene, it was a black and white TV movie, and there was a certain scene that came up and this woman's face was on the screen and she was making an expression with her face for something that just happened. And I got up and I went to the restroom. When I went to go to the restroom, I saw my father sitting on their bed, on the side of their bed, crying. So I ran back out into the den and I said, Mama, Daddy's crying. And that was the end of the dream. That hmm. was it. Okay. The very next night, just a regular family time eating. I'm sitting there watching a movie and at four years old, I see the same scene, the same expression on the same woman's face. And at four, I remember this, Sid, as if it happened this morning. I said to myself, oh, this is when I'm supposed to go to the bathroom because I just had the dream. So I felt <laughs> it was like a play and this is my part in you're, the play. You're, you're just playing out what you saw in your dream. Exactly. So I got up, went to the bathroom and was shocked. My father was sitting on the side of his bed crying. 
I ran out. Exactly what you saw in the dream. Exactly what I saw in the dream. And so I ran out to the den and I said, Mama, Daddy's crying. Sadly enough, come to find out someone had just murdered his brother in Washington, D.C. And so that was the beginning. How, how did this, uh, how do you process this as a four year old? I just thought it was natural, maybe. It, I, I guess so. Supernaturally, naturally supernatural. To the point to where I didn't even think about it. It was like I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I was shown. And it was natural for me. It, right. And it was not, I mean, talk about, you know, the Bible says you're supposed to provoke the Jew to jealousy, but hmm. this is ridiculous. At five, wow. you start seeing angels. Yes, exactly. Now, now, when you would see them, would you just conscious they were there or did you actually see them? I actually saw the angels. It started in Mrs. Baring's class. I was five years old in kindergarten when I first started seeing the angels and I, I wasn't afraid of the angels. They were very comforting and they still are very, very comforting whenever I see them. But sometimes you don't know why the angels are there. Right. So I asked the Holy Spirit, why are the angels here or why is the angel here? And, and sometimes the angel is there because he has something that he came directly out of the very presence of God to deliver. Sometimes, Sid, I'll see two angels. I remember a few times specifically when I'm ministering, I'll see two angels. And the Holy Spirit said to me, one is a warring angel and one is a ministering angel. The warring angel came through some stuff through the spirit realm so that the ministering angel could deliver hmm. what he had to deliver. So sometimes the Holy Spirit said to me, sometimes God will pair a warrior angel with a ministering angel. Okay. When you see the angel, could you describe the way one might look of what you see? You know, for about the past seven minutes, Sid, there's been an angel standing right behind you. Well, you know, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. There's an angel standing right behind you and he's about nine to 10 feet tall and around his belt is like a blue cord and the blue cord is tied in the front but off of his shoulders are like blue fringes there's some blue fringes uh very muscular built standing straight and it's Stra all straighter than me okay oh yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> standing straighter than you are and his his ex his expression is as if he is waiting for a command. It's he's standing there as if he's waiting for a command. But I sense so strongly that he's assigned to you. He is assigned well, to well, you. Well, you know what? Sometime during something more, I will hear what to command and it will happen Hallelujah. Uh, now when you're ministering yes. uh, there's many times there's angels uh, uh, in fact you you see them lined up yes there was one particular time in this small town the small church I was ministering and the angels appeared they had two sections in the church which made a middle aisle and they lined up and so I'm just beginning, you know, thank you all for inviting me, things of that right. nature. And the Holy Spirit says to me, count the angels. And so, you know, I'm still talking, but in my head, I'm mm -hmm. counting the angels. And then he led me to declare it. And I told the people, there are nine angels here tonight. They are lined up in the center aisle. So then Sid, I preached the message. And as I often see, some of the angels will line up at the very back of the room and while I'm preaching or while I'm about to finish or whatever, they start w flapping their wings violently. Well, what does that mean to you? To me, the Holy Spirit says, when you said to me, when you see that it's time for you to move in the gifts of the spirit, it's time for you to move in deliverance. So at that point, I saw those angels. And so I began and I always like to start with salvation and altar call for salvation. So I called and I, I just really, really, really gave my heart for what the Holy Spirit said. So at that point, the people came up 
and I was about to pray, the Holy Spirit said, count the people. And so I'm, I'm still, you know, about to pray, prepare myself to, to lead them to, he said, count the people. And I did, it was nine people. Hmm. And so I said to the audience, I said, do you remember how many angels the Lord said were here earlier that he showed me? And they said, nine. I said, count how many people up there. It was an uproar. It was an uproar. Uh, yeah, one angel for each person. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The nine people who were there. And God assigns angels many times to individuals. Sometimes the Lord has something that he wants to give to an individual and he will use his angelic host to come and bring his gifting to that individual. Tell me about uh, of this lady that had a lump on her side for oh. six years. Oh, that was remarkable. Another time that the angels lined up the back of the church. It was the building that our church had before the one that we currently have and they were lined up and so I began to minister and the Lord said, call for those who need healing. And so I did. And this one lady came up and she and her family would visit every Sunday morning. So she came up for prayer and I asked her what was going on. And she said, I've had this lump on my side and I don't know what it is. So I prayed for her. Now, we, we talked earlier about being a nice Christian. I don't like laying my hands, especially on certain parts of a lady. So I asked one of the sisters of the church to put her hand there. Then I put my hand on top of hers. And so I prayed. And after that, she told me, Sid, the lump got larger. Wait a second now. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be scripted. Look at my script. No, <laughs> exactly. And so I was like, it got larger. And she said, Pastor Wall, wait, I've got to tell you. Her name is Penny. I've got to tell you what happened. Pastor Wall, I told one of my coworkers what the doctor said. It was a cancer and what type it was. I started crying because my coworker said my sister died with the same cancer. But the doctor told me, asked me, how long have you had this? And when she told, she said, there's no way. So they did a biopsy, found out it was cancer, but they found something else out. All of the tissue that had grown after I prayed, isolated that cancer so hmm. it could not spread. So they were able to go in, tear it all out, clean it all out, no complications. She has had zero complications. So that was the miracle when uh, it grew. Well, that's a great miracle. Now, I am so intrigued with how God has taught you about understanding from the Bible. Yes. And it really, it really started uh, in uh, 2008 when your mother unexpectedly died. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. Well, my mother, she, she passed away in her sleep and it was a Sunday morning. I didn't know what was going on. My father called me and we were just like, what in the world is going on? So I rushed to their house. And once I got there, I saw her on the stretcher and they were rolling her to the ambulance. And they said, just meet us at the hospital. Just meet us at the hospital. So we went and we got there and they said, we'll go in the waiting room. I kind of felt what had happened. I mean, she wasn't ill, deathly ill or anything of that nature. So there's the no, pre no, no preparation for this. Yeah. None whatsoever. Okay. So the doctor came into the waiting room and he asked us what happened. And so we told her she had like a cold and we said, why don't you go to the doctor? I don't want to go to the doctor for what? I, I just get a little pain right here whenever I'm breathing in my clavicle, but I'm fine. I said, why well, call the ambulance? She said, for what? That night is when she passed away. So I told the doctor everything. He said, well, we did everything we could, but she did pass. I said, okay. So. She's, he said, after we get things kind of cleaned up back there, we'll let you come back. So we went back there and then there was a moment, Sid, that I was with her alone. And I was at the foot of her bed and I took my hands and I hit her feet and I said, get up in the name of Jesus Christ. And I 
felt the glory of God hmm. come all over me, all over me, Sid. And I looked at my mother's face, literally believing, expecting for her to breathe and open her eyes, but she didn't. By that time, my sister and some other people came into the room, so I moved so that they could have their time with her. I just moved and leaned on the wall. I was disappointed. I felt defeated. Immediately, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I heard what you said, but that's not what I want to do. Yeah, you know, that is the last thing that <laughs> I would have expected the Holy Spirit to say. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you what, why don't you just hold that thought right okay. there. Uh, but how would you like to have supernatural understanding in every situation in your life? Uh, 300 times in the Bible, it talks about understanding. Uh, it, it tells us to get understanding. Uh, give me uh, a one sentence understanding of the word understanding from the biblical perspective. In all thy getting, get understanding. We get our understanding from God. The clearest thing in the world is whatever you face in life, there is an understanding that God has for it. It doesn't matter what it is. This is, I believe, the sentence that I really, really, really want people to grasp. Whatever God says is the understanding. You know, that's so simple, it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, you're going to ex you're going to discover power that you have to defeat every demonic foe you have in your life. Uh, you're going to flow uh, with an instant increase in accuracy in the spiritual gifts, uh, practical ways that you can obtain this revelation, supernatural understanding from God in every situation. Can you picture how many times have you prayed, God, I don't understand this loved one did everything they were supposed to do. They're young. They shouldn't have been taken. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There is a force, that's the word, that comes from heaven to give you understanding in every circumstance of your life. So I can't wait to get the understanding package to you. Uh, it's the book on understanding, and uh, I like the subtitle. All success is attained by it, uh, and it's also a three CD series. I'm going to tell you something. This is what you've been crying out for. We're making it available for investment of $35. And I say investment because any profits we make poured into Jewish ministry. When we come back, we'll find out what God meant when he talked to Shane. Be right back with something more. Call our order only line 1-800-447-2697. one 447 2697 2697. Sid Roth with something more. I have Shane Wall and I know you're on pins and needles to find out his mother dies unexpectedly. He is, needless to say, devastated. He prays for her. He feels electricity going through his hands and she, she, she doesn't uh, survive. She's dead. And uh, so he goes off by himself and he hears God's voice. This is not what I would have expected God to say. But what did he say? He said, I heard you, but this is not what I want to do. At you that, mean he's being God? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sovereign <laughs> Lord. He's the owner. Exactly. This isn't what I want to do. And so then the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me, this is the time for your mother to leave. So I knew that and sadly enough for me, you know, because I'm her son. That Do you think she knew that? I really believe she knew that. Is Sid. that why she didn't get the medical help That's you told me? Why about? she she would not get it. I believe she wanted to die at home. I, I think she wanted to go to heaven from her own bed. 
and she knew that the time was near. Yeah, who would want to go to heaven from a hospital bed? I know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so she was favored with that choice. What would your, what would you be today mm. if back then you thought, and the devil uh, egged you on, right. God took my mother? I know. I don't think you'd be where you are today when God... I would not, because I would not have received what God said as the understanding. So that was my understanding. Sometimes when people die, we wonder why, as you said earlier, they were so young or they were such mm. a good Christian. Why did they get this disease? Why did they die? When we hear from God, whatever he says is the understanding. So but, I but, hold well, yeah, on. The problem is we don't hear from God to get this understanding. Exactly. And we have to give God in all thy ways, acknowledge him and our ways sometimes are to get discouraged. That's not the way to get angry, to get frustrated with God. That's not the way. In other ways, acknowledge him. We don't acknowledge God. Most times when people going, when they're going through something like that, they go to God, they're out of frustration and, and they're expecting God to answer them right at that particular moment. Sometimes you find that God has his timing. You better believe it. He <laughs> does. He does. And he waits for a particular time to tell us my time was after I tried to raise my mother from the dead. I had the faith. I knew that it would just happen, but God didn't tell me to do that. I did that because this is my mama. And she just died totally unexpectedly. I want her back. God said, I heard you. And said, the Holy Spirit said to me, what you felt, that glory that you felt was God hearing you. Hmm. I said, wow. Because I was wondering afterwards, I, was, I know I felt the glory of God. Like I usually feel when miracles are about to happen in the service where I'm ministering. That was God hearing you. I heard you. But that is not what I want to do. And and when he showed you that he heard you, yes. you translated that as my mom's healed. But he had to give you th this understanding That's as right. to what even that was. Exactly. And he did. That's why we have to get our understanding from God or else we will lean, as the word of God tells us not to, lean not unto thine own understanding. And that's what a lot of people do. Instead of going to God, getting his understanding, we take our understanding to God and want him to co-sign on it. But it doesn't <laughs> work that way. Uh, okay. Shane Wall went on a passion, a passionate search for understanding. I mean, it's nice to know that this is available, but how do you access it when you want to? Uh, and I, I think that I've never heard a message on this before. Give me your definition of understanding. Understanding, Sid, is revealed insight. Now, knowledge is information. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is information with experience. But understanding is revealed insight. Only God can reveal true understanding to us. That's why it is supernatural. Because you can't get understanding, the understanding from God. You can't get that on a human level. You can't get it in human atmosphere conditions. You have to get it directly from God. The way to get understanding Whatever God says is the understanding. So you get the understanding by simply believing whatever God says. So when God says something and you believe that, when he said, this is not what I wanted to do, I believe that. In other words, your mother being raised from the dead is not my will. And I always say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. So I believe, Lord, this was her time. She belongs to you. She really doesn't belong to me. She was my mother, but she belongs to you. Look, look at the destruction that could have occurred yes. if he thought, what kind of God took my mother? Right. Look at the, what he's gained 
every circumstance in his life. Now, how does this activate the gifting better? You said it activates the gifting better. It really does. See, when you get understanding, when you highly value the Word of God, whatever God speaks to you as being the understanding, because what a lot of people like to do, they like to think about what God says. God has already put all the they're, they're processing everything rather than just taking it for what God said. Exactly. And when you do that, you're doing what the word of God says not to do. Lean not to your own understanding. Right. right. So when God speaks and we lean to our own understanding, we're thinking about it. God has already put all the thought into what he has said. He does not need our thoughts at all. So when we value God's word as the understanding, the gifts of the spirit are only attuned to God, to his spirit, to what he is saying. So now you're not thinking about your flesh because there are three voices, our own voice, the voice of a devil, and of course the voice of the Holy Spirit. So when we are so used to just waiting on God for his word so we can get the understanding, we value it. I'm going to get the understanding because Proverbs 4, 7 says, in all thy getting, get understanding. The gifts of the spirit become more accurate. Accurate just means true. It is true. It is truth. I'm not prophesying out of the issues of an individual's heart. I'm giving you exactly what God is saying because I have a habit of understanding. I live my life just getting understanding from God. I believe Jesus is about ready to return. Thank you, Lord. Uh, where we are in history with uh, everything going on in the world. And I'm not a doom and gloom man. I'm a glory man. Amen. God's glory is going to cover this earth. Yes. And that's my focus right at, at this moment until from this moment until uh, I go there or he comes here. Amen. Uh, but where we are, yes. if we can't have this information, I don't see how even a Christian is going to survive. You're right, because we've got to hear from God. And whenever we hear from ourselves, whenever we try to figure it out on our own, it just causes more headache. It causes more heartache because now we want God to do our bidding instead of us doing his bidding. So what we, is happening? We got it backwards. <laughs> we do. We do. We say, and many people say, Sid, I'm just waiting on God. When they don't hear God saying, no, I'm waiting on you. I've given you my word. You're not acting on what I told you. You heard what I said, and you're waiting on another part. You know, it's like playing checkers. I can't move twice. Once you've moved, it's my move. Once I move, it's your move. God has moved. What did he say? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened. Once I move, then it's your turn to move. And that is God's understanding. That is what he said. And we have to do what he said or else we will never get the understanding because again, what he says is the how, how do you personally pray for understanding? I ask, uh, give me an example if you actually do it right now. Most definitely. What I do, I'm, I'm going through a situation uh, at my job. And so I say, Father, what do you want to do about this situation? Jesus taught us in Matthew. He said, before you even pray, your father knows what needs you have. Therefore, go to him, our father, which art in heaven. So he already knows. He already knows. So I say, Father, this is what's going on at my job. How do you want me to handle this? It's not right. You know it's not right because it doesn't line up with your word. Do I have a part to play in this or are you going to work it out some other way? He speaks to me. I have the understanding and I act accordingly. In all my ways, I acknowledge him. Why? To get the understanding. He directs my path. Many times, Sid, my path is sit there, shut up, don't say a thing. I'm working on it on the other side. Hmm. That's the understanding. So I sit there as an obedient son and I take everything that's coming against me and I just simply wait 
for God to deliver. And he will because I'm his son. He loves me. So he is definitely going to hear me and he's going to act according to his word. Now, I see that you're a God gifted teacher. If someone were to read your book, Understanding. Yes. Someone were to listen to the CDs that come with the package. Yes. Or someone was to sit under your teaching. Can they really do what you're doing? They can. And I'm going to tell you this. God has gifted so many people, Sid, and that is why they watch. And that is why they listen. They want to know, what can I do? Understanding, Sid, is tailor fit for every individual. When you get the understanding from the book and the CDs, when you get the understanding, it will fit who you are. When God created you, he created you around purpose to fulfill the purpose. So when you get the understanding, you will literally be able to fit the understanding to your purpose and you will fulfill your purpose in the earth. Guaranteed. Why? Because you're getting it straight from God. Now, as you have had such a passion for understanding and you've you've researched it in uh, in, and God has done things in your life uh, as a result, you came up with keys. Mm. Um, Tell me, tell me one key. One of the keys is, well, I want to lead up because this was remarkable to me, Sid. Of course, we know that Jesus told Peter, he asked, you know, who do men say that I am? And some say thou John the Baptist, some say Elias. He said, but who do you say? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed that to you, but my father revealed it to you. Then he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Said, I searched throughout the Bible because I know God has no respect to a person. I want the keys. I'm your son, just like Peter right. is your son. I want the keys. The Holy Spirit said to me, get a Bible, a chronological Bible. And from that point in scripture, where Jesus told Peter, I will give you the keys. He said, I want you to find every time that Jesus said something directly to Peter or referring to Peter from that moment onward. And you'll find a key. I was blown away. Hmm. As you said, I searched the scriptures. There are 10 instances where Jesus, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit here, where Jesus himself gave Peter a key through something he said. And one of the times was when Jesus was saying, you know, I'm, I, I have to go and the son of man is going to be killed. And um, of course, Peter at that point was like, no, 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 no. And Jesus said to him, get thee behind me, Satan. You are not savoring the things of God. You are not paying attention to things of God, but you're savoring the things of man. Key number one, savor those things that be of God. And when you savor them, you're paying attention to them. You're valuing them. That is one of the keys. And so with the 10 keys that I found, you're able to bind on earth what is bound in heaven. And in the original language, when I searched it, it literally bound literally means illegal. Loosed means legal. Hmm. So whatever is illegal in heaven, glory to God, you can declare it illegal on the earth. Whatever is legal in heaven, you can declare it legal on the earth when you have the keys. Here we go. In Acts, here is Peter going up with John and they see the man begging. Look on us. So he looks to receive money. What does Peter say? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. What did he have? The keys that hmm. Jesus gave him. In the name of <laughs> Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He had the, when you have the keys, the man was lame. Are there lame people in heaven? No, it's illegal. Whatever is illegal in heaven, when you have the keys, it's illegal on the earth. When we declare it, because we have the keys of the kingdom of heaven, it has to work. 
the word of God is clear. And these keys are detailed in the word of God. And once we get those keys, it is a life. As you see the keys, you'll see it's a mentality. It is a life that we have to live before God so that he himself will honor who we are because we're doing what? We're taking what he said as the understanding and we're living a life of understanding. In the times we're living in, they can be the best of times or they can be the worst of times if you have understanding. No matter what happens, they will be the best of times. I'm understanding from God. I want to get this book in your hands and I want to get the three CD series because it is going to revolutionize your walk with God. It's the missing ingredient for the end times. And the CDs are on three subjects. Uh, the spirit of understanding, spiritual benefits of understanding, and kingdom keys of understanding, all 10 keys. And I'm going to tell you something. I've, I've, I've just met uh, Pastor Shane Wall. However, I, it's, you don't have to be a mental giant to see that this man is a gifted teacher, not in the natural sense, in the supernatural sense, for an investment of $35. I want you to get this. You'll get something more. And when we come back, we're going to have something more because God's going to show up in your life. Call our order only line, one 800 447 2697 800 447 2697 Sid Roth with something more and I'm here with Shane Wall and uh, you you're blowing me out of the water on some of the prophecies you've had uh, according to my notes here you prophesied to an infant that he would be a genius and now he's age 10 get this and has a full scholarship that has to blow you out of the water <laughs> it really did tell, tell me about that i was managing an artist a gospel artist and he sang that saturday night and i preached that sunday morning and so the pastor of the church asked me to pray for their brand new infant baby boy their grandson so i held the baby and i was just praying and then the holy spirit started speaking and i said the lord said that this child is a genius and will be a genius. And so I prayed accordingly and handed the baby back. And I, through Facebook, the grandfather, I hadn't heard from him in a while. He sent me the article, the whole nine yards, said that, do you remember my grandson? You prayed for him and you said he would be a genius. There is a university. He is so smart. There's a university that says whenever you graduate high school, if you choose to come to us, you will get a full ride, a full scholarship wow. if you choose us at age 10. Shane, why? Does there appear to be such a huge emphasis on understanding in the Bible? I mean, what, 300 times? Exactly. That, that is, if God says it once, that should be enough. <laughs> well, it's because, and of course, we've mentioned before, Proverbs 4, 7, in all thy getting, get understanding. Because understanding, Sid, is a superpower. All success is attained by understanding success in marriage success in your workplace success in ministry all success is attained by understanding i usually tell people i want you to just think of somebody just think of anybody you consider successful and so i wait a couple seconds and i say i guarantee whoever you're thinking about they are successful simply because of what they understand and everybody's eyes get larger, like, oh my goodness. They were thinking about maybe a doctor or a singer, uh, a politician maybe, or some athlete or some actor or actress. Because of what they understand, that's what brings success. When you go to look for a job, let's say on an unemployment site, you'll see the title of the job. Everybody wants a title. They're going after titles. They're going after money, the fame and the fortune, all of that but they're missing something. So when you go on the site, you see the title and you see the salary, all of the benefits, you'd love it. 
But what is under that title? The job description, which is what? The understanding. So if you get the understanding, you can get the title. You can get the benefits. You can get the salary. What am I saying? When you get understanding, understanding attracts success. That, that's what I was just going to ask you. When we demonstrate God's understanding, we become a magnet for success. A magnet for success. Everybody who is successful, it's because of something they understood first. If you didn't put forth your football abilities, you would not have attracted success. If you would not have the understanding for singing high notes very clearly, you would have never attracted the success to your life. Whatever it is that you understand and understand well always attracts everything else you really need. So get the, un that is why it's so important and God puts so much emphasis on it because when you get understanding, everything else is almost like God is saying, everything you're asking me for, get understanding. Understanding already has it. It's a package deal. When you get understanding, you get the success. Uh, you know what I'm hearing you say? What's Most that? people put God in a box of their logic That's in right. a formula and when God doesn't conform to their formula they say I guess God doesn't love me <laughs> and they are missing it you're right they're totally missing it God does love you he gave you his word when you give somebody your word on it you're gonna have to back it up and of course God's word and I, I tell people the Holy Spirit said to me God is only responsible for one thing out of everything we hear and say he's only responsible for one thing his word if he doesn't say it he's not responsible for it so when we get God's word on it when we get that understanding everything else we want everything that we've been asking him for we can get it through the understanding that he's already given us that we put on the shelf oh this is just understanding now I'm waiting for the goodies now I'm waiting for the blessings. It's all in the understanding. Every bit of it. <laughs> you call this God's ultimate secret to success in every area of your life. Every area of your life. It is. There is nothing else on planet Earth or in any hemisphere or stratosphere that you can say God uses this more than anything else to bring success. It's his ultimate secret to success. I say secret, as you said at the beginning of the program, you said you've never heard a message no. on understanding. A friend of mine said, I've been in thousands of services. I've been in over 60 countries with different church services. I've never heard a message on understanding. It's a secret. Someone said, I think God just saved this message for you, Shane. I think hmm. he just did. And it's a secret because everything we've gotten, it was an understanding. This set, everything we get is from understanding the clothes that we wear, the water that we drink. Everything comes out of understanding. There has to be an understanding if there is to be success. And we can get understanding because God has all of it and it's freely given. And the word of God said, doesn't even say to ask, just get it. As a matter of fact, in the Psalms, the psalmist says, give me Understand. It's almost like commanding God, give me understanding that I would keep your law. Yea, I shall observe it. Give me understanding and I will keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. In other words, what I need is your understanding. I can't keep your law without understanding. I cannot do what you've called me to do without understanding. You know, I know that I have a prophetic gift in me, but I don't understand how to use it get understanding. Okay. We'll clarify again. What is the difference between wisdom and understanding? Okay. Wisdom is information. Of course, knowledge is getting that information. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is I have this information and I have some experience to go along with it. But understanding is revealed insight. God reveals the insight that we need for a particular situation for our gifting. He reveals the insight that we need to receive and he wants us to act on the information that he's given to us by the knowledge and then we have the experience, yes, but we don't have that 
insight. We do not have the insight. So we ask God for the understanding. All right, I'm going I'm to uh, demonstrate this right now. And then okay. I'm, I'm going to draw in the, uh, make a demand on the anointing on you Praise God. to demonstrate this right now, because yes. I've heard this several times. Uh, there are people watching right now or listening to us right at this moment. And you have a pain in your neck. If you'll just bend, you'll bend right out of that pain. There are also some people with problems in your jaw and in your teeth. God wants to heal you right this moment. And problems with your fingers when you bend, you have no problems anymore in, I'll use his Hebrew name, in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name. What's God showing you? The Lord is saying to me that there is someone who is watching right now. And as a matter of fact, when Sid was giving those words of knowledge, you put your hand, it's a lady, you put your hand on your heart and you began to believe God. That's right. You began to believe God to touch you at that moment. He saw you, precious lady. He saw you. And the Lord not only touched you, but he has healed you. As a matter of fact, you'll know it's you, of course, by what I said, but you've also been having an upset stomach no matter what you've been eating. You've been having an upset stomach that goes in Yeshua's name. It is gone right this very moment just by the power of God. You told me that God longs for us to have this understanding more yes. than we even want it. Exactly. He I does. mean, how can we how can we build his kingdom on earth if we're doing it as Frank Sinatra said, our way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, building it our way. We cannot. And that is the frustration in the soul of man. I know what God has for me. I know I'm supposed to be somebody, but I don't know how to get there. Lord, show me how to get there. No, I'm going to give you the understanding of who you are. Once you know who you are, then, as I said earlier, you can act on the revealed insight that God gives you through understanding. Give me understanding. And that's exactly how we can get it from God. Father, give me understanding. As you just said, he wants us to have it much, much, much more than we want to. So we say, God, give me understanding for this situation. He has to because he commanded us to get it. So we go to him for it. He has to give it to us. And it doesn't force him. It is his joy. Jesus said, little children, it is the father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants us to have the understanding. Let me ask you a, a very sensitive area. Has God given you any understanding about money? Yes, he has. You know, there was one point in time I said something to God. I said, Lord, I need money. And he spoke back to me. The Holy Spirit said, you don't need money. Money needs you. I said, whoa. And then he showed uh, that's me. That's what I'm thinking. You <laughs> said it. I'm thinking. <laughs> exactly. I said, whoa. And mm -hmm. I, I work at a credit union. And so I've seen stacks and stacks of cash. So he said to me, take $1 million, put it on a table. What could that money do? I said, nothing. Exactly. You don't need money. Money needs you. Hmm. So don't go to God and say, I need money. No, money needs you to spend it, to invest it, to donate it. Money needs you. That's the way God sees money. So you have to have the understanding about money that God has. Then when you go talk to him about it, concerning the understanding that he has about money, then you can receive. I received the miracle because of that. What was the miracle? I was preaching and I told the saints, I was talking about uh, faith. And I said, you know, I have faith. I'm going through something now. This is early in my pastoral ministry. And we had very few members. And so I knew none of them could even give me what I needed. So I felt very comfortable in just sharing how behind I was on my mortgage. And I, I didn't give the amount, but I said, I'm behind. And I told the Lord yesterday, Father, I don't want this blessing not one second before you give it to me. I don't want to be out of sync with your desire at all. 
Everything is timing in the kingdom. If you, if you look if you look at the feasts in the Bible, it's timing. It I is. mean, it's the whole first coming of the Messiah is shown to us. The whole return of the Messiah to earth in the biblical feast. So God set up this whole earth. In fact, eternity has no time. Exactly. But here we are stuck with <laughs> something called time. Okay, so now you're behind in your mortgage. What yes. happened? And so then when I told the saints, I said, listen, I'm behind, but I'm believing God. I told him I don't want it one second before that he wants to give it to me so not a problem there was a guy who visited our assembly and he asked if he could meet with me I said okay and he had been visiting quite a while Mm -hmm. so I thought he now wanted to join but just wanted to talk to me about becoming a member so he said can I come to your home I was like okay and so (laughs) he did came to my house and he said well I heard you say that you were behind in your mortgage. Do you mind sharing with me the amount? And so I said, okay. I said, it's $5,000. He said, whoa. I said, yeah, I know. Thank you for your concern, but it is quite a bit. He said, Pastor Wall, that isn't why I said, whoa. I said, whoa, because when you said that, I went and I prayed and I asked God to bless you. And God said to me, why are you asking me to bless him when you have the $5,000 that you can (laughs) give him? He said, I said, well, because God has never given me such specifics in prayer before. So he went and literally brought 5,000 cash dollars to me. I've never had that happen in my life. And, and, And as you explained it, it was not in, you know, a lot of ministers manipulate. You're right. Uh, they, they, they don't ask God, let's face it, they exactly. manipulate. That wasn't in your heart. Not at You all. were just explaining. It, that's all I was doing. <laughs> this man, I didn't even know him. And he just came in just regular clothing. I wasn't trying to make a plea. God spoke to him. And that was the proof that there was no manipulation or else God would not have spoken to him and given him the specifics. He said, that's exactly what God said. So he left my house and he called and said, can I come back? And in a small brown paper bag, he bought it. And so I kind of questioned him. I said, you just have cash like this laying around on a Saturday? He said, you know, this is just what I do. My mom did it. You know, we just like to keep our money with us. I said, okay, you know, hey, praise God, glory to God for it. And that came for me saying to the Lord, I don't want it one second before you give it to me. Your understanding is what I'm resting on. Simple, just that simple. I am so enthusiastic Mm. of the revelation that you are going to get you are really going to be, this is what you've been praying for. Otherwise, you're just like a non-believer. If you're not hearing from God and getting understanding, the book, it's called Understanding, the three CDs for an investment of $35. And, you know, you told me when I talked to you on the phone yesterday, that God had shown you something about our ministry. What, what did he show you? The Lord said concerning messianic vision that he is expanding. He is opening doors. It's because the reason why people watch and will be watching something more and listening to the podcast and the radio and it's supernatural is because you are used by God to give people the understanding that they need to get. That is why they constantly watch, they constantly listen, be, listen because they're getting understanding. So you said understanding attracts success, success. and that's why it, this ministry is Successful. I mean, it, it's and amazing. Well, it's going to grow. Do you, do you know we don't owe anyone anything? Glory and to God. Uh, you haven't had a, ta- a walk through our, our, our facility. It's state of the art. Wow. That means mm. that mm. after mm. the expenses of TV time and things right. like that, yes. everything is poured into reaching Jewish people with the gospel. That is remarkable. You have a heart. That's the other thing the Lord told me. Sid has a heart. He has my heart. He wants the understanding for himself. So he seeks it. He gets it and he gives it to others. You must be talking from God because you're reading my mail. You (laughs) see, I I am not just trying to do this for you. Mm. I do this with every guest. 
I try to understand what they're doing so that I can do the same thing they're doing. And guess what? I've been doing it. Amen. And guess what? Many of you have been doing it. <laughs> Amen. And they are getting the success because they are getting the understanding. So glory be to God for messianic vision, for releasing the understanding that people need to get. I shudder to think what would be happening in the world if there was no messianic vision, if you did not seek God for the supernatural, if you did not reach out to those who God is using and say, come teach me and let's teach the world so that they can get the understanding. And when they get it, they will be successful. They've been praying for people. Nothing has been happening. They've been trying to operate in the gifts. Nothing has been happening, but let's give them the understanding. And with all they're getting, they get the understanding. Success is immediately attracted to the understanding because God revealed it. And whatever God reveals, he will always back it up. Okay. I can't wait to get the understanding package, the book and the three CDs into your hands for an investment of $35. It really is. I want to rock the devil out of your world. Hallelujah. And I want you to rock the kingdom in your wherever you go and walk like a magnet attracting the understanding of God. And I pray that for you in Yeshua, in Jesus name. Amen. To place a credit card order for today's offer, call anytime at 1 800 447 2697. That's 1 800 447 2697. Or log on to our website at www.sidroth.org. To hear this week's interview or watch archives of our television show, It's Supernatural, visit our website at www.sidroth.org. That's www.sidroth.org. Discover how you can begin watching for free our 24-hour, 7-day-a-week TV network, ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. You can write me at Sid Roth, Post Office Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. That's Sid Roth, Post Office Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278.